What's up, YouTube? This is Chris, a.k.a. Barn on 11970. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to check out my videos, and I hope you guys enjoyed your weekend. All right, guys, um, the vote is in in the Ukraine, in Crimea. So let's uh, read one of the articles that I found. Um, I will post the link in the bottom of the description box. So if I'm not going to read the whole entire article, but I will give you enough to where if you want to continue to read it, I highly recommend it because these are some interesting times ahead and we really need to start paying attention to what's going on here and not listen to the mainstream media who, as you could see, for some reason, it seems like they want war. They're either totally incompetent and don't know what they're doing or they're doing this on purpose. Either way, it's not good. But let's read part of this article. You can go from there and I'm going to give you my opinions on what's going on and hopefully educate some people who may not be familiar with the situation. Because mainstream media, which is 90% of it owned by about six corporations, are going to tell you their propaganda ways. They're not going to give you accurate information. They're not going to give you varied information. They're going to give you one direction. That's what propaganda is all about. And I really hope at this point more and more people that are not following these kind of channels right now, or maybe the first time you're listening to this, you might want to start waking up because if people choose to stay ignorant and focus on things that are not important, like the Oscars, like sports, like Miley Cyrus, like all these ridiculous things that are there to dumb you down and keep you ill-informed, there could be some dangerous times ahead. And those who watch my channel know I'm not a doom and gloomer. I don't believe in nuclear war because there will be no winners from it. But if the average person out there doesn't wake up really quick and doesn't really start investigating things on their own and just sits there and absorbs like a sponge whatever you're programmed to think, there could be some interesting times ahead. And I, I can't stress enough to be a free thinker, to verify things, to make sure you don't just sit there and just listen to what somebody says, including myself and others without verification, without your own checking into things. With that being said, let's get into this article and let's start talking about what's going on. Um, right now, um, and again, I will post the link. The title of this is Gold Stabilizes After Crimea's Vote, Markets IFOMC Meeting. And this was posted a little bit earlier tonight. All right. Uh, gold has clearly emerged a winner in last week's volatile metals market. With the safe haven asset rising more than 3% on the week to hit six-month highs, current prices continue to hover at the $1,380 levels after yesterday's key riot risk event, the Crimea vote. On Sunday, Crimea voted on whether they would join Russia and had many market participants watching the news. Results showed more than 90% of Crimeans chose to leave Ukraine and join Russia. The results were largely anticipated, but what is key would be the actions of possible sanctions issued by other countries. Now, I'm going to stop right there because the rest of the information, if you want to verify it, you want to check into it, please do. I highly recommend it. Don't just listen to what I'm saying. I want you to check these things. Be a free thinker. Don't, don't base everything that you ever learn just by listening to anyone, including myself, because there are a lot of liars out there. And even people that are not liars can make a mistake and maybe read something wrong. So you, I want to make sure you guys do that kind of stuff. But I want to say, we want to set the record straight of what's really going on. Because unfortunately, this government that we're in, in the United States of America Corporation, let me first get this straight. I love America. I've been here, born here, lived here all my life. I don't love the government that's running it, especially the past few regimes. And the more I learn, the more I realize it's not what you think it is. Whether you believe in it or not at this point is irrelevant. Belief has nothing to do with fact. But the point of the matter is, right now, if you click on any TV station, any radio station pick up any newspaper, they're going to make it seem like they are edging for war. Why? Because they know that the dollar, the petrodollar, the world currency, is in jeopardy right now. And anything that could distract the people from knowing what's going on, 
even if it means war or potential war, they are not afraid to do it. And there's an old saying, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. And unfortunately, we're the eggs if we choose to sit there and do nothing about it. But make no mistake, we right now are playing cards. We're playing five card draw with the Soviet Union. They have a full house. We have a pair of twos. They know they got the upper hand. And they know we're bluffing. Do you want game over? Because like I said, I'm not a doom and gloomer. There will be no nuclear war. Because like I said, there will be no winners. But that doesn't mean they can't scare the living daylights of the average person who will sit blindly by their TV and listen to channel after channel after channel. Program them with the same thing over and over again. And sanctions are not going to work when you have Russia, which I believe is the second largest holder of our debt. And I find this very hypocritical, especially the people who don't want to research and they're just the flag, the flag wa uh, waivers. And they sit there and say, oh, you know, make accusations about you. You want to talk about helping Russia or dealing with these countries? You're a, you're a socialist or you're a communist. Well, anybody ever find it funny that the two largest debt holders of our money, of our debt, is China and Russia, both communist? You see the hypocrisy in this government where we can do business with them. I mean, look how much of our jobs have been taken from our own country, from our own people, and shipped overseas to China. They have no problem, I guess. You know, you're dealing with the devil, I guess. You have no problem with it if there's a profit. But when it doesn't go your way, then it's evil. Then it's corrupt. Now we have to put a stop to it. And I find it ironic how this president of this corporation always loves to help other people with their freedom, with their right to be able to do what they want, but not their his own citizens, which we know citizen is basically means you're under the jurisdiction of a corporation known as the United States, which is not the landmass country that you see on the map. It's a 20 square mile radius located in Washington, D.C. What's happening right now is this country that I live in and I love, the leaders of this country who have been selling us out for for decades can't get enough money, can't get enough power, can't get enough fame, can't get enough ego. And right now they're trying to put sanctions on Russia. And you see by that description that I talked about, that that um, that message, whatever, whatever the hell it is, I don't care. I can't even think straight right now because I'm very angry. But that um, was talking about the 90%, almost unanimous as you can get, voted to want to go back to Russia. Because most of Crimea, and most of, at least half of Ukraine, is full of Russian people who want to go back. And like it or not, they have the right, if the people decide to make a vote and choose to do something, who are we to say that they can't do it? Just imagine if some other country told us what we can and cannot do. The arrogance does not go one direction. And the hypocrisy seems to never end. And if you think that Russia is going to back down when they have the upper hand, you are either crazy, stupid, naive, or wanting something evil to happen in this world. None of those are good. Because if you don't know this by now, Russia gives, I think, about 70 to 80 percent of the natural gas to Europe. They take the, pet the petrodollar, which means they help buy our inflation, which keeps us living this lavish lifestyle that is slowly and powerfully getting sucked away from us and rug is being pulled out underneath us. So if we try and do any sanctions... Who's to stop Putin from going and saying, all right, give us all the sanctions you want. Now, we no longer accept dollars for the natural gas. We'll accept gold. Or we'll accept whatever other currency other than the dollar. And then all of a sudden, China follows. 
and then the European Union backs down because they don't want to have their people spending $20 a gallon for natural gas. Do you see where this is going? And this is going to affect precious metals and not just gold and silver. I've made videos about platinum and palladium, and you can see those are on the rise. Right now, platinum's up $18, palladium's up 10 Because people, whether they want to believe it or not, the United States of America Corporation is not the superpower it leads you to believe. Because we're supposed to be this wealthy nation. How can you be a wealthy nation when all you have is debt? If you are a person that has millions of dollars worth of things in your house, not that you earned, not that you bought, but you go, you got on credit, and you haven't paid any of that debt, you don't own those items. You are not wealthy. This is a nation of debtors. We've been a nation of debtors since 1933 when this corporation went bankrupt, and then money had to be borrowed into existence using us as collateral. And at this point, I don't care if you don't believe it. And I know my subscribers do believe it. You get the idiot trolls that have nothing better to do than hate on people who will sit there and say, oh, I don't believe it. Well, just because you don't believe in it does not mean you're right. And if the average person out there is going to spend their time worrying about American Idol and the Oscars and all these ridiculously non-important things, and then turn on the TV and maybe listen to Fox News or MSNBC or CNN or any of these garbage mainstream medias who were bought and sold a long time ago. And they're going to accept whatever they're told without question. And that's a dangerous road to lead right now. And if, if Russia decides to no longer accept the dollar, the petrodollar, and if you don't know what the petrodollar is, I highly suggest you start researching it now while you still have the opportunity to learn why it's so important that we kill people around the world to keep it going. That if they decide to no longer accept the petrodollar and China happens to follow suit and India decides to follow suit and Iran starts to follow suit and all these other, these other countries start to follow suit, guess what happens to the dollar? It goes bye-bye. And anybody not holding any amount of precious metals is going to be having a very difficult day. And yes, the only thing to have should not be just metals. You should have food. You should have water. You should have batteries. You should have some gas. You should have other than gold and silver. I've never said that's the only thing you're supposed to have. I made plenty of videos about those other things. There are just some people that have the memory span of a goldfish. But my point is this. We can sit here in our arrogance, we could sit here with our naivety, we could sit there with our judgments and fight amongst ourselves while very crucial life-turning events, worldly events are happening right now underneath our feet. And we can do nothing. We can argue, we can debate, or we can educate ourselves. We can decide that it's time that we all say no more of this. Because if you know anything about the history of war, it's not the presidents and the kings that get killed very often. It's the people. When our country in World War II ended the war with Japan, or right before the war was about to end, and we bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki, that was not where the prime minister of Japan lived. It was just regular towns with regular people. We ultimately pay the price. So... If there is, and there, knock on wood, I don't believe there ever will be a nuclear war, but if there was, guess what? All those leaders, they're going to be in these wonderful bunkers, very far underground, safe from all of that. And maybe they're willing to live the rest of their lives underground while the rest of us suffer. So if we don't start doing something about this soon, there are definitely two paths that we can take in this. I, I refuse to go down the path of a nuclear war. I'm not a fear monger. I know in the end we will win in the end and there will be peace and there will be resolution. I refuse to lower my vibration down to that fear because that's where they control you. And if you don't take it amongst yourselves to awaken and spend your the rest of your days 
awakening people to what's going on in Crimea, where they have the right, whether we like it or not, the people have the right to make a choice. Just like we have the right to make a choice. And just imagine us, if all of a sudden China or Russia or someone else decided, well, we're not letting you do it. We are, we're not going to recognize it and risk war. This is more than just precious metals. Yes, it's, it's good to have protection. But if it ever got to that extreme measure, that means diddly squat. I think it's time we all start putting down our differences. Stop with the divide and conquer. Stop being f controlled. Doing their bidding. Even not really realizing you're doing it. And we got to start spreading this message to everybody. Because the, if we leave it up to the mainstream media, who's bought and paid for, they're going to tell the masses what's not happening. And that's how you create an agenda. I think it's time. So check out the link. Give me your comments. Like, share. If you've never seen this before, subscribe, favorite. Do all the wonderful things you got to do to help me get this information out. Because I care enough to put my life on the line and put my face on the line and be subject to humiliation and attacks and people that have nothing better to do than try and hurt me. And I don't care. I'm not afraid of them. I'm not afraid to do anything other than the right thing. And that doesn't mean I won't make mistakes along the way. And it doesn't mean you won't make mistakes along the way. But if your heart is in the right place, you're going to try and do the best that you can. And I think it's time we all stop pointing fingers or start wait, stop waiting for somebody else to do it. Do your part. Get this information out. Because if we leave it up to our professionals, our politicians, our people that go to the fancy schools and wear the wonderful suit and ties and have plenty of money to throw around that they've stolen from you to tell you what to do. If we want to leave it up to those experts, hope you have a bomb shelter. And the people that want to make fun of somebody like me because I'm just a nobody. Yeah, I'm a nobody, but I'm a nobody that gives a shit about more than just myself. I care about you. I care about your family. I care about this planet. And we're going to let a bunch of greedy SOBs take over and lie to us and just keep stealing from us? Why do we continue to bend over and take it? Why, because some of you say it feels good? I know my subscribers get it. That's why you keep coming back here. And that's why I think you appreciate when a Joe Schmo nobody like myself is not afraid to stand up. Isn't that what patriotism is all about? What doing the right thing is all about? Is not having to be a hero, not having to be Superman, not having to be financially backed, not able, not even having to have six million friends by your side. It's by standing up by yourself and saying, I'm not going to take anymore. And I'm going to do the right thing and I'm going to say the right thing because it's important. Because it's important for me, my family, my animals, and you guys. And this could turn into a really big deal. If we want to keep letting our politicians sell us out time and time again, and they've been doing it since God knows how long, how many decades, stealing our money, using us as collateral, making us fight amongst ourselves because they make things seem so ridiculous that we'll actually hate each other. You'll hate the messenger. You won't hate the people doing it. You know, I've had these some of these trolls call me a, a communist, which I find utterly ridiculous. But let me tell you something. Our government works with communists. Just look at all the debt that China and Russia hold of ours. Just look at all the jobs we throw overseas to China. We have no problem doing business with them. We have no problem taking our money and hiding it over in other countries so those people can make more and more money and not have to pay taxes. That's why all these big corporations that are still here pay little or no taxes. Because you ship it overseas, they don't have that apply. I just love the hypocrisy. Are you tired of it yet? Because I sure as hell am. But I'm just myself. I can't do it without you guys. And as you see with my videos, I'll get a couple hundred, maybe a thousand views. I tried to do that, um, the petition. It got 400 signatures. And for the 400 people that signed it, Thank you. You guys cared enough and you weren't afraid to make your mark. So we were a few a few thousand short of a hundred thousand. But you know what? I'm proud of it. 
It didn't work, but I'm proud of it because I wasn't afraid to do it. And all the haters and all the naysayers and all the trolls and all the angry people and all the jealous people or whatever, what have they done besides spread hatred or continue to help separate us and keep us divided, keep us fighting amongst the wrong people while the people at the top keep stealing everything that you have? But I guess you like being dangled a couple of their scraps. I don't need their crap. I will not comply. I will not stand for this anymore. I will speak truth until I can't breathe anymore. And tough shit if some of you out there don't like it. Because it ruins your your little carrots and your little scraps that they give you. Because it's just enough to make you happy. And I'm talking about the police out there who work for a corporation known as the United States. I'm talking about the military who work for a corporation known as the United States, who are shipped overseas and accept rules and regulations that most of them know are wrong, but yet they still follow them because I'm just doing my job. Just remember that if they ever string you up and you're in the middle of a firing squad or the very people that wanted you to go kill and they paid you dearly to go do it, leave you behind, and just about when you're about to get your bullet, just remember, the guy pulling the trigger on the other end was just doing their job. Just like people have done throughout society, just doing their job. Well, this is my job. My job is to say no more. My job is to alert people that if we don't get our act together real soon, whether it's doom or gloom or not, it ain't happening to me, I can promise you that. But I'm making my mark. And the ones that make fun of it, the ones that attack it, the ones that don't understand it, go to their channels and you will see zero contributions that they make other than hatred. Congratulations to them. Their parents and their forefathers and their family must be proud. And I may not reach more than a couple of dozen, maybe a couple of hundred people. But if those people decide, I am going to do my part, and they wake up a couple of hundred people, and then maybe one day everybody shuts off the television and their program, and they decide to think for themselves and say, we're not going to listen to your lies anymore, and we're not going to comply, and we're actually going to research things and stop being force-fed lies, we'll take back everything without pulling a trigger. I'm waiting. It's time to put up or shut up. I'm, I'm ready. What about you? You want Ukraine to go over really bad? Then do or say nothing. And if it gets to the point where we have these bluffs that we're doing with these sanctions and they decide we're not taking your debt anymore and now we're no longer taking dollars. Good luck with all that money you got paid to hurt other people. Trying to use that money that's in your bank account that they've now shut down. And all the people that laughed about the gold and silver, if that skyrockets because all of a sudden the dollar t loses half of its value overnight, you're going to wish you had it. Not getting it from me. And I know a lot of my subscribers, they have plenty of metal. And I'm sure a lot of them have another metal called lead. Good luck trying to take theirs. I think I've said enough. If you appreciate this stuff, leave a comment. Give it a thumbs up, like it, share it, subscribe if you've never subscribed before. Get this message out, make your own video, stand up, or do nothing. But if you do nothing, who the hell are you to complain? Thanks for watching, everybody. And to everybody out there, including the people in the Ukraine and all the people around the world, peace.